Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning. We are welcoming Ashley Bettis from Canton Ballet and Clayton. And do you want to give us your last name, Clayton? Um, Tabler. Very nice to have both of you. And so we've got a, a McKinley football player, a bulldog here, along with Canton Ballet. Why in the world are we doing this, Ashley? We are having a fundraiser. It's an inaugural fundraiser for Canton Ballet, which is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. The event is called Touchdowns and Tutus, and it will take place March 4th. What we've done is we've taken 10 of the top high school football players in the area, and we've paired them together with dancers at the Canton Ballet in a celebratory performance. And the 10 couples will actually get to perform in front of several celebrity judges that we have coming to Canton. Clayton, I cannot imagine your reaction. First of all, congratulations. <laughs> you are one of the top football players in Stark County. Guess what that gets you? We are pairing you up with a ballet player and or ballet dancer, Aww. and you're going to get to do a little bit of dancing. Your reaction to that news was what? It was, I was shocked, and I was <laughs> proud at the same time. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing opportunity. Well, that's the right attitude. Okay. And your, um, your interest in ballet up to this point has been what? Um, it's, it's grown. It's, so. mm -hmm. And let's point out that you won't necessarily be doing just ballet at this event coming up uh, March 4th, but you kind of get to do an awful lot of different kind of dancing. You're a pretty good dancer otherwise? Yes. <laughs> so no problem, no qualms there. You've got the confidence there. Yep. Well, tell me a little bit about your experience. Uh, I think of the relationship with the Dancing with the Stars kind of people. W was it sort of like that? You met a little bit of uh, anticipation and then getting to know one another and then really starting to learn. Tell me about that process. Yeah, first day was a little shaky because a little nervous just meeting each other for the first time. And then once we got to know each other, we got to build confidence and Tell me, let's give a shout out to your instructor. Who are you working with? Anna Bettis. She had to build my confidence because I really wasn't showing how much I can do. And once she helped me and built my confidence, it was better for me. Where do you rehearse? At the Canton Ballet. And so are you in front of a mirror the whole time? Yes. Does that help to kind of see what you're you watch her and you see what it's supposed to look like and then you watch yourself and you kind of imitate it and yes. then just like in football your muscles have memory right and they start to remember what it feels like to do it right you describe it that's what I think but you tell me it helps uh looking into the mirror so tell me what you've learned <laughs> from her I learned a lot well, she's a very good dancer she does her own type of dancing she teaches kids and it basically helps me more so what kind of dances will you be doing on March 4th, Clayton? It's a hip-hop dance, uh, Closer by Chainsmokers. Oh, very, very fun. Okay, Ashley, this has just got to be so gratifying for you. Have you been watching some of the students, these young football players, as they're learning? Yeah, I've been saying I'm actually quite shocked at how far, far they've developed. Um, you know, coming in the first day, um, it's quite different now, six weeks later. Um, watching how much they've, you know, progressed. What's interesting is how awkward, of course, the first day, you know, of rehearsals, because as a dancer, we have a different relationship to our bodies. You know, we're used to touching each other and putting our leg up on the other person. And then you have these boys come in and you're like, here, touch her right there. And, you know, their faces are like 10 shades red. It's very awkward, especially for a teenager. But now that they've been rehearsing, you know, for six weeks or so, the progress has been absolutely tremendous. And their attitudes have been fantastic. Something that used to be taught in seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade was social dance in the schools. Not anymore. Where you learned the proper holds yeah. and the right way to dance together without being embarrassed or, and to have that confidence that you're doing it right. What, in your opinion, what did we lose when we stopped doing that? I think we lose a lot. I mean, your body's your instrument, and there's no better way to express yourself than through the human body. And I think um, it's something that everybody should be exposed to. I believe, because we live in a sort of world where kids are aggressive. There are bullying issues. Um, there are a lot of violence, obviously, in schools. And if kids are given the opportunity, whether it's through art, you know, a paintbrush, or through dance, through the body, 
I mean, it's a perfect platform to really, truly express yourself. I have a feeling I'm going to be asking this to uh, one of the real cheerleaders for this, but why is it important to have things like the arts, dance, and so forth taught in public schools? Well, first of all, we all know it's the first thing to be cut, and I think it's quite quite the reverse. It should be something that should be invested in, I believe, because through art, it does art does change lives. Um, the art sometimes exposes you to things sports cannot. Um, I guess if you study the brain and what art does for the brain, you know, there's so many scientific studies that show that how much art improves your critical thinking. Um, Clayton, have you noticed your grades going up in the last six weeks? Yes. Is that right? <laughs> wow. And mom is back there nodding, too. Isn't that something? Um, when Ashley says something that dance teaches you some things that sports cannot, do you agree with that? Yes. What would you say? What have you learned through dance that you have not learned in sports? It really it gives you a chance to express yourself more than what you usually can. Mm. Mm, I like that. So there's a an self-expression yes. through dance that, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you think this is going to catch on with other guys? I mean, you obviously are a role model in your <laughs> school, so the little kids look up to you. They see you doing this. You think that's going to encourage them, perhaps, to try it too? Hopefully. Yeah, very cool. All right, uh, Ashley, you got this idea how. What a, what a fun idea. Well, I got this idea because obviously we know that Canton is quickly changing. And there's a shift, I think, which is going to be primarily focused on tourism. And we all know that this is obviously the birthplace of American football. And we wanted to come up with a kind of creative fundraiser that had more community outreach, that involved more schools, that went into areas that wouldn't typically be exposed to art or uh, maybe areas that, you know, aren't necessarily usual theater goers, so to say. And we wanted to bring them in and expose them to this and show these kids that, hey, look, maybe going to the theater, it's not so bad. Maybe you would attend a dance performance. Maybe some of these kids kids that usually don't, um, some of these schools that don't usually attend, you know, the school performances that Canton Ballet offers, like Peter and the Wolf and the Nutcracker, they might reconsider it for a field trip. And these, like, um, that's actually what some of the money for the fundraiser uh, does raise money for but i think um the community outreach for this is huge it's the biggest i think we've ever done fundraising wise i think right now there are people hearing who do not normally go to the ballet who do say oh i want to see clayton do his hip-hop routine for sure <laughs> so uh, tell me all the details as far as where and when this is taking place Touchdowns and tutus will take place March 4th at 6 o'clock p.m. at Umstadt Performing Arts Hall on campus at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And like I said, we're taking 10 of the top high school football players and we're putting them together with dancers at the Canton Ballet in a celebratory performance. They will be uh, performing in front of celebrity guests, including NFL tight end Vernon Davis, Sylvia Mackey, the wife of Hall of Famer John Mackey, and Ohio State Buckeye Matt Wilhelm. The event will actually be emceed by Jameer Howerton, who is a 20-plus seasoned NFL uh, veteran sports reporter. Clayton, you're not only going to get to dance, you're going to maybe get scouted at the same time with these people <laughs> in the audience. And uh, let's tell everybody your number. Number 88. And do you know of another famous 88? <gasps> Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan. <laughs> Lynn Swan. He's a Hall of Famer, isn't he? He is. He's a Steeler. I heard Clayton's like a real diehard uh, and he was Steelers a Steel fan. fan. And you yes. know what else? He used to take ballet. He took ballet all the way through his professional career. So must help, huh? Have you noticed possibly what you are learning in dance is helping you with your athletic abilities? Um, yes, it's actually helping my footwork. Your footwork? <laughs> in what ways? Uh, making me quicker isn't that cool i think they're more conscientious of their body now that it's been explained to them through dance terms because in dance we use there's more focus on the smaller muscle groups versus uh sports where they focus on the larger muscle groups in uh, motor skills like running jumping they i don't what do you do the grapevine as training yeah i think <laughs> but other than that you know there's such a focus um in dance on the small muscle group that I think it helps because it's it's broken down for them in such a detailed way that I think it makes kind of a switch go on in their brain and say, oh, now I get it. 
it's always very amazing, I think, to watch some. That made any sense? It, it certainly <laughs> did, and and it's interesting to watch um, a large, muscular wall of people dance because they can be extremely light on their feet. Yes, yes, I'm I'm quite impressed. Like I said, by some of the boys, and there's some of them that are really big that are moving much faster than I would have ever thought. I mean, Chris Anthony from Maslin. I don't know what came into him the other day because I was running a rehearsal because his teacher wasn't feeling well. She's expecting and (laughs) she's having one of those days. So I ran the rehearsal and I don't know what came over Chris Anthony, but he was like, he looked like a professional. He just started moving in this way across the floor. And he's, how big is Chris Anthony? I don't know. How, six, four, yeah, 265 maybe. I mean, he's a big boy mm-hmm. and he just and he had this presence and he just moved across the floor and I was like, "Oh my goodness." So I'm sensing another Mass McKinley rivalry about to happen here. <laughs> with- I, I rigged this like this on purpose, you know. It's Canton, it's a football town. You got to, you know, take the ball and run with it cuz I went to Central Catholic, so that was like the first um school I approached approach because I was like, okay, well, if I can't get Central, <laughs> then I'm probably not going to be able to get anybody else, but I know I can at least get them. So, of course, Central agreed, and, you know, I had co- called Coach Lyndon Smith, and then, of course, I said, okay, well, if I got Central, then I have to get St. Thomas. Well, they, well then riding. if I have St. Thomas, well, then I'm going to have to get McKinley. Well, if I get McKinley, well, then I need to get Maslin. <laughs> and we went down the line, so. Well, let's go down the line. <laughs> what all schools are going to be participating here? I'll give you a second to uh, find that list, but it sounds like you really made your way around Star County to have a good representation. We even have St. Vincent, St. Mary. Oh, my gosh. I, like I said, we I really tried my best to reach outside of Stark County, and I tried to kind of invite schools that, you know, aren't necessarily located right next to Canton. Well, I know he's not a football player, but, you know, LeBron does support an awful lot of things that St. V's does. It, we ought to really try and get the word to him that this is happening. Oh, huh? they've actually been really great. They just sent out in their athletic department newsletter last week, and I got a copy of it. They did a beautiful article on the kid that's participating. Um, so it's it's been great, wow. you know. I'll, I'll talk about the schools. We have okay. Erica Shee from Alliance, and she's dancing together with Chris Anthony from Maslin, whom I'm just mentioned i said he might be the next chris spielman i don't know if anybody remembers the old advertising campaign for canton ballet with his um former wife stephanie yes Yes. um so chris the way he moved across the floor move over chris spielman you know (laughs) here comes chris anthony for canton ballet and i'm not kidding he's a class act he'd be happy to pass the torch i'm sure yes uh we have anna mears and Nick Binney, both from Hoover. So those two are dancing together. We have Marie Kaplan from Glen Oak with Gerard Baradarin from St. Vincent, St. Mary. We have Margaret Kingsbury from Glen Oak dancing together with Darius Stokes, who's also from Glen Oak. We have Taylor Adams, who goes to Central with Trey Carl from Minerva. Tamaki Hoshi and Francisco Pedroso from St. Thomas. And if anybody doesn't know Cisco Pedroso, he is six foot eight, 306 pounds. Worth going, worth the price of admission right there. Yes. Just to see that. Uh, amazing. And he sweats his, oh. you know what, off in rehearsal. I mean, he's just <laughs> drips. Because, <laughs> you know, you make them do an hour and 15 minute, or a one minute, 15 second dance. Yeah. In football, they can break every seven seconds. They're not used to moving, moving, lifting, moving, moving, turning, moving up, down, you know, for a minute and 15 seconds. So it's aerobic. I think, yeah, it's a lot more aerobic, I think, than what they're used to. And it's obviously great cross training for them. We also have Arissa Pradophicus from Jackson with Tyler Adams from Louisville. Tyler's the smarty pants. He's attending Harvard University oh, next man. year. Okay. Isabella Hellman from Jackson with Griffin Baumel from Central. Griffin is actually attending the Naval Academy, and he, it's interesting, Griffin wrote the whole process to get into Navy and Army. I'm totally getting off topic. I didn't realize, I watch a little football, but I'll admit, like, I'm not like a diehard football fan, like I'm the artsy type. I didn't know how difficult it is to get into Army and Navy. You know, you don't have just a normal football tryout. You have to write like this letter to Congress and get nominated by a congressman. Well, Griffin wrote his letter to Congress on this fundraiser. Oh my goodness. And he said when they sat him down at the Naval Academy, he got like 10 points and he says that's pretty much what got me in. Oh my goodness. Great place to pause. We need to take a quick break. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to our community.